So I want to introduce right now one of our newest worship leaders who's been worshiping with us and now is leading us, Sister Krista Campbell. Give it up for her. And in that same spirit, let's go further in God. You're amazing, love. You're amazing, love. You have offered me your heart. Your
how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Just sing that last line, just that very last line. Your amazing love towards me. Sing it again, y'all. Somebody needs to be reminded of that. One more time. Your Hallelujah. How many people are grateful for the amazing love of God? There's no love like it. <laughs> for God so loved the world that he gave his own. Because his love is amazing, he sent his son for you. Hallelujah. It's an amazing love. Yeah. Woo. It's amazing. It's amazing, yeah. amazing love. Amazing I tell somebody to scream out amazing love in this amazing, place. Amazing somebody scream God. out amazing right now. I tell you to declare that because his love is amazing, your life is amazing. Because his love is amazing, your healed body is amazing. Because his love is amazing, his peace is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bless your name, Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So look, because we got to go on and, you know, give offering and do all that stuff. So we have one more song for you. I need you, if you're at home and somebody's in the room with you, if you're in the room by yourself, you're screaming Woo. out into the other room, just tell them, I don't know what you've come to do. I don't know what you come to do. But I come to give them praise. But I come to give come on, them everybody praise. clap like this. Back in the day, at church, when they'd get real excited, the deacons and the deaconess would sing a version of this song. But we're going to do it a little bit different. Y'all ready? We need y'all to help us. Just repeat after me. Say, I don't 
know what you come to do. Let me hear you say, I don't yeah. know what you come to do. Y'all got it? Say, I don't know what you come to do. Let me hear you say, I don't know what you come to do. I'm going to talk about myself. But I know what I've come to do. Let me hear you say, but hey. I know what I've come to do. Say, but I know what I've come to do. Let me hear you say, but hey. Come them hands like this. I've come to sum my feet. My feet. I've come to give them praise. Ooh, yeah. I've got the victory. victory. Everybody just say, oh. Woo. Hey. Here we go. Sing this again. Say, I don't. Know what you come to do? Let me hear you say. I don't know what you come to do. Say I don't know what you come to do. Let me hear you say. I don't know what you come to do. But I know what I've come to do. Let me hear you say. But yeah. I know what I come to do. See, but I know what I've come to do, let me hear you say, but I you. know what I've come to do, oh, 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 I've come to clap my hands, my hand. I've come to stop my feet, my feet. I've come to give him praise, you know why, cause I've got the victory, victory. sit right there, hey. I've come to clap my hands, I've come to clap my hands. I've come to clap my hands. I've come to clap my hands. I've come to stomp my feet. I've come to stomp my feet. I've got the victory. I got the victory. Yeah. I love this part right here. It says if you don't know, if you don't know, you don't know. If you don't want to praise, if you don't want to praise, watch me praise, watch me praise. If you don't want to praise, if you don't want to praise, watch me praise, watch me praise. If you don't want to dance, you don't want to dance, watch me dance, watch me dance. If you don't want to dance, you don't want to dance, watch me dance, watch me dance, watch me, watch me. Say, watch me, watch me. Watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me, praise him, watch me, praise him, watch me, praise him, watch me, praise him, for the glory, for the peace, for the joy, for his love, for the healing, for deliverance, watch me, watch me, hey, everybody clap real good.
praise him in this place. Somebody praise him in this place. Somebody praise him in this place. Hey, so we need y'all at home as we transition to the next part of service. We just need y'all to sing this last part with us. It's simple. It's easy. And we know it's a new song for y'all. It's the first time singing it. But watch this. If you don't want to praise, watch me praise. Watch me praise. If you don't want to praise, you don't want to praise. Watch me praise. Watch me praise. If you don't want to dance, you don't want to dance. Watch me dance. Watch me dance. If you don't want to dance, you don't want to dance. Watch me dance. Watch me dance. If you don't want to praise, you don't want to praise. If you don't want to praise, you don't want to praise. If you don't want to praise, you don't want to praise. If you don't want to praise, you don't want to praise. Say watch me. Watch me, 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 Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Welcome to California Worship Center. I need y'all to make some noise. Come on, come on, come on. Amen. We came to praise the Lord. If you you haven't figured that out by now, um, thank you for everybody for logging on and and, uh, being with us this morning. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. We thank you. Uh, we, we pray that everybody had a blessed Thanksgiving. Um, even those of us who could not be with our families uh, and be with our loved ones, we, we, we've been in prayer for you. And we've really been in, in heavy prayer, just binding and casting out that spirit of yeah. isolation, the spirit of loneliness. Hallelujah. We, we thank God for comforting us even in times when we can't be around everybody you want to be around. Uh, but God is always there. Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the earth. So we thank God for his presence this morning. Um, it's time to worship the Lord in our giving. Somebody get excited about that. Amen. God is doing something really, really special here at the California Worship Center. Your gifts, your seeds, your tithes. How many tithes do I have? If you... If you if you're on Instagram, we got tithers. Lift your hands up in the, in, the, in the comments. Say, I'm a tither. Yes, I'm a tither. We appreciate your gifts and your tithe and your obedience uh, because it is blessed to give. And God has richly blessed uh, this church and, and because of our obedience to, to give to the work of the ministry. And so we thank you. What, what key am I in today? D-flat? Yeah, give me D-flat. All right, all right. Um, if you would like to give, and I, and I, and I, I know you do because you want to be blessed. I want you to go to your phone, pick up your phones now, and and text one word, Cali Worship, C A L I, Worship. I know you know how to spell worship. Cali Worship to seven seven nine seven 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 nine seven seven. Cali Worship there, or alternatively, you can just go and download the Push Pay app and give as often as you like. I go on and give all during the week. Uh, that's why I'm blessed. I, I, that's because I give a lot, and uh, God richly blesses the Campbell household. household and, and there's so many testimonies um, mm. and, and stories yeah. all throughout our congregation of people who have literally worked the principle of the Bible. Because wow. it's literally the only place in Scripture where God says you can test Him. And Malachi, He says, "Prove me now." Uh, and won't you just see, just just do it, just try it and see. Won't I pour out blessings upon you? I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing where you won't even have room enough to receive it. Man, that's the kind of blessing I want. Anybody want a blessing like that? I want a not room enough blessing. I'm praising God for a, a blessing that will be so big and so massive that it'll overtake my space and I won't have enough room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, if you're blessed, let me do this. Let me hear you say blessed. Blessed. <laughs> All the blessed people. 
Mm-hmm. Say bless. Bless. Hey. Come on and say bless. Bless. Yeah, yeah. Come on and say bless. Bless. Right here. We're blessed in the city we are. We're blessed in the city. Oh. We're blessed in the fields. We're blessed when we come when we go. We For the devil is defeated. For the devil is defeated. We are, we are blessed. Let me hear blessed. For the devil is defeated. For the devil is defeated. Come on. We are blessed. Let me hear you say blessed. 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 Come on, make it personal now. Say, I'm blessed. 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 Prophesy to your neighbor now. Say, say you're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. You, 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 you are, you blessed, you blessed. Come on, declare it all over the room. Hey, we're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed. Yeah, we're blessed in the city we are. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field. Oh, no, no, We're blessed when we come, when we go. We, we can. Hey. For the devil is the fear. For the devil is the fear. We are. We are blessed. Hallelujah. I want everybody to repeat after me. Not as a debt I owe. Not as a debt I owe. Come on, bigger than that. Not as a debt I owe. Not as a debt I owe. But as a seed I sow. Seed I sow. In Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for the seeds planted, gifts given, Father. We we thank you and we pray for every family member uh, represented here Father all the families in the California Worship Center and abroad Father Lord, we ask that you stop by their house Lord Jesus and double these seeds we declare that they are returned 100, 1000 fold as your word said in Jesus name it is so everybody say thank God amen 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 yeah 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 Hey, now won't they do it, won't they do it, won't they do it, yeah. Won't they do it, won't they do it, won't they do it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, won't they do it, won't they do it, won't they do it, check, yeah, yeah. Won't they do it, won't they do it, won't they do it, yeah. Won't they do it, won't they do it, won't they do it, yeah. Won't they do it, won't they do it, won't they do it, yeah. If you've been blessed, give God a hand, praise. Not just us in here, you on your couch, in your car. Give God praise. You're blessed. You're blessed. We're, we declared you are a blessed people. Uh, the Bible says, blessed shall you be in the city and in the field. Blessed when you go in. Blessed when you come out. Hallelujah. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. Anybody ready for the word of God? Come on. Is anybody ready for the word? Uh, before we do, I want to uh, just lift up everybody who is uh, sick and make sure that we're praying for them. Let's, let's be in prayer for our sister Mary Dysart, who I just found out she had a, a bad accident uh, a couple weeks ago, and she's been in pain. Uh, and so we need people to call and check on her, make sure she got uh, soup and uh, whatever she needs. We love you, sister Mary. Um, and for everybody else who just been struggling during this time, we are praying for you. Your church has your back. Amen. I said your church has has your back. Bring me my phone right there. There's something we didn't do, but I don't want to.
from here on out. I don't want to ever not do this. And that is to repeat our declaration, our faith declaration, uh, because I think it's very important uh, that we continue to align and assign our faith for the things that are to come. And uh, we have to say it out of our mouths. Sometimes you got to say it until it happens. Uh, faith comes by hearing, hearing. And so it says, Father, we understand that you have a perfected plan for our individual lives, but you also have a specific plan for this faith community, the California Worship Center. Listen, we believe everything that your word says, and we believe that without faith it is impossible for you to be pleased with us. For by faith we understand that the worlds were framed so that what we now see did not come by anything that can be seen. Father, we align our faith, hallelujah, with your word. And we assign our faith to every promise given to us by your word. We specifically assign our faith to focus on the perfect facility and home base for this church, the California Worship Center. We choose to believe for it, hallelujah, with our whole heart. Uh, we choose to believe for it with our thoughts and prayers. We choose to believe for it with our actions and our giving. We choose to be tithers and seed faith givers, tapping into the supernatural provisions you have uh, made available to us. And Father, as you prepare us for what you have prepared for us, we will cheer and celebrate the blessings of others. We will wait patiently with no envy, no jealousy, and no anxiety, for we know you do all things well and in perfect timing. Father, uh, we give you all the praise and all of the glory and honor in advance because of who you are in our lives. You have never failed us, and you never, ever, ever will. I'll say that again. You have never failed us, and you never will. You've never failed us. Hallelujah. And you never, ever, ever will. Hallelujah. Our trust, our hope, our faith, our 100% in you. We activate and assign our faith to all these things in the strong name, Yeshua, Jesus, the Christ. And it is so. Everybody say, thank God. Come on, bigger than that. Thank God. Amen. Uh, right now, it's my pleasure to, to bring to you my, my, my best friend, uh, my, uh, my baby mama, my, uh, the one that makes me laugh. Uh, when I think about it too long, I get grateful and cry. Uh, the peanut butter in, on my jelly sandwich, the... The sugar in my Kool-Aid, the cream in my coffee. I'm the coffee. She's the cream, by the way. Uh, your first lady, y'all put your hands together and welcome first lady Erica Monique Campbell. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Callie. Good morning. I hope you are feeling good in your spirit. I hope you realize that this is the day that the Lord has made, that we will rejoice and we will be glad in it. We won't, we're not forced to rejoice. I'm, I'm glad to rejoice. I'm, I'm honored to give you worship. It's my privilege and my, pre my pleasure to magnify your holy and your righteous name. I, I give honor to God, to our pastor, and to overseer. Um, to, literally to everybody that has been working in ministry, we understand that we are in a tough time, but Cali Worship, you guys have showed up, and I'm so grateful. The giving that took place um, over the weekend, Mama Rose shared some testimonies that was just outstanding, and I'm going to be really candid with you. Um, when I, I realized what we were doing, and, and you know, we all get caught up on social media sometimes, and so I'm seeing what other people are doing, I'm going... Man, we should have did more. Man, we should have did more. Even though we're, we're giving a substantial amount just to pay for people's groceries, which is amazing. But sometimes the enemy will make you think that what you're doing is not enough. 
And when she came back and told us the testimonies of a lady who had come to the store, she was at another store. The Lord told her to go to this store and they paid for her groceries. She said she only had pennies in her purse, but she came anyway because she knew that there was a blessing for her. And there was another family that was walking past the grocery store and the little boy was saying, can we go in? And the mom said, no, please, can we go in? And the mom said, no. And so Sister Rose seen them and, and handed them a gift card and they were so happy and the little boy said, now can I get a birthday cake? And so instead of giving them the $50 card, she took that back and gave them a $100 card. So we were able to be a blessing to people, Cali Worship. And that is what ministry is all about. That's what we're here to do, to be a blessing to other people. This is not a selfish ministry. It's not self-serving. It's not about me. It's about us. And it's about us giving God glory. And so I want you to feel good about what your church is doing because we're trying our best to reach as many people as we can for Jesus. I'm excited about this scripture this morning. It's, it's one that is very popular, and I know that we've seen it many, many times, and we've read it many times. But I really pray and I hope that God gives us a different, a better, a clearer revelation of what he's saying and what he's requiring of us in this scripture. Lord God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for this time. I thank you for the opportunity, God, to be a mouthpiece for you. Speak through me, Father. I pray that I decrease in you increase in me have your way lord use me for your glory and i pray that it blesses the people god you know what they need i thank you for being just what they need just when they need it not a moment before and not a moment too late you're always on time and so we thank you and praise you and give you glory in jesus name amen all right y'all let's go to uh philippians 3 13 and 14 that's philippians 3 13 and 14. If you got to say yes, sir, if you don't say you got to say hold up. Don't y'all miss that in church? Gosh, I miss church. The scripture says, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. We all would know I press toward the mark. We love that when I press toward the mark. We're going to get into it a little bit deeper today. I love the beginning of, 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 you can have your seats, you can have your seats, those of you that are here. I love the beginning of, of, of this verse 13 and how honest Paul was. And Paul says, I count not myself to have apprehended. In other words, he's saying, I don't have it all together. I'm not quite there yet. I, I'm still struggling with some things. There's still some things that, that I don't understand. I'm acknowledging that I'm not an expert and I got some stuff. I got some baggage. I got some things holding me down, but I'm, I'm ready to move forward. But I'm realizing that I, I still need some work. I still got work to do. I'm trying to hold on to who's holding on to me. I'm reaching for who's reaching for me. And sometimes, sometimes I struggle. I don't think we hear people stand in the pulpit and say that often, but I think if we were more honest, honest, like Paul was right here, acknowledging that I don't have it all together, but there's somebody that I know that can carry me, cover me, teach me, push me just where I'm supposed to go. See, what happens is sometimes because we don't have it all together, the enemy tells us everybody else has it together. Why don't you have it together? They pray more than you. They praise prettier than you. And so you tend to think that there's something wrong with your fractured praise. God recognizes every broken hallelujah. He recognizes each tear. He recognizes when you lift your hands, even when your arm hurt. God recognized that. I count not myself to have apprehended. I haven't quite gotten there yet, but God, I'm trying. God, I'm pushing. God, I'm trying to get there. I, 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 I'm trying to figure it out. I don't get the these and the thous, but I'm going to keep picking up the book because I know this is where the answer is. I count not myself to have apprehended. And I think we all should be honest in that way. Be honest with God, with ourselves, and even the people around us. Be honest about your faith walk, about your journey, about how you're trying to get where you want to get. I love this, this version in the, the translation, the, the Passion Translation. It says, I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this, but I love that next part. But this one thing I do However, I do have one compelling focus. 
However, I do have one thing that I'm, that I'm trying to get to. This is how I put my faith in action. I focus forward by forgetting those things which are behind me. Now, most times when we say forgetting those things which are behind me, we think it's all bad stuff. No, no, no. No, no, no. Sometimes you have some spe- experiences. And you go, I mean, I know it was wrong, but I, I had a good time. I'm just saying. You don't know me from back in my day. I used to, you got to forget that stuff too. The brokenness, the battles, and the victories. You can't hold on to it. It's over. It's gone. It's done. If you're trying to get to God, what you're turning around for? What you're looking back for? How you going to reach and look back? How you going to forget and reach? You can't. So you've got to forget those things which are behind. Mary Mary had a song. And I loved it so much. It said, I never, ever want to press for wine. Never want to go back in time. It's not much glory in that story, but it's mine. So I'm loving who I am today. The past has passed away. And finally, I've forgiven me. Sometimes what you have to forget isn't what other people have done. Sometimes what you have to forget is what you have done. You can't lift your hands because the enemy is always telling you, you know what you did, you know who you call." You know what you watched last night? Put your hands down. You can't worship. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to the things that are before me. And here's what I love about the scripture is that you don't have to do this by yourself. He tells us that we can be transformed by the renewing of our mind. He tells us that he'll keep us in perfect peace. So the turmoil and the stress that you feel, if you turn your eyes, turn your focus to Jesus, then the peace comes doesn't mean the problem goes away, but when God is there, all the circumstances change. So as I'm forgetting and as, I, as I'm reaching, I'm still focusing on Jesus. And it takes some work because sometimes what you did is real bad. It's real jacked up. Sometimes the results of your bad actions is in your face. Sometimes the result of your bad actions you have to raise. And so you still have to forget. You still have to make sure that you are focusing on God so you can forget and reach. Now, what are we reaching for? This is what uh, was always so interesting about uh, the, the I press part. We go, I press for the prize. We love the prize. We love talking about the prize. I'm pressing for my prize. I want my, I'm pressing for my prize. We're not pressing for the prize, y'all. We're pressing for the mark. What is the mark? Do we know what the mark is? Have we bypassed the mark? The mark is living right. The mark is Christian character. The mark is making the right decision even when no one's looking. The mark is making sure that your heart is in the right place even when your mouth is saying something. The mark is living right. And it is possible to live right in 2020 with as much anger, confusion, and frustration. It is possible to live right. It is possible to still have love in your heart. It is possible to still have peace in your mind even when you don't have money in the bank. It is possible to love the person that did you wrong. It is possible to meet the mark. And when we meet the mark, that's when we get the prize. So you're pressing for the mark. I'm pressing for the mark because I want the prize, which is my heavenly divine invitation that I personally received from Jesus when he called me his own. I've got to meet the mark because I want to get this invitation that Jesus promised me when he died on the cross, when he called me his own. I've got to meet the mark so I can get this invitation. The invitation is for all. Here's what I love. We all got a choice. I know people love to say, you know, God arrested me and and that will happen. But can you imagine the beauty of Jesus saying, here, this is for you. And you don't say, I can't right now, Jesus. I got, let me fix some stuff. For you just say, God, I receive everything you have for me. And because you are living on the, the Holy Spirit is living on the inside of me, you will equip me to meet the mark. I'm not trying to meet the mark of my own goodness. I'm not just trying to reach the mark. I'm training myself. I'm focusing on Jesus. I'm getting in the word of God. I'm hiding the word in my heart that I might not sin against God. And plus, I also know that I got goodness and mercy following me all the days of my life. Yes, I can do this. Yes, I can do this. And I have a desire to do it. A lot of times we struggle because we don't really want to let go. Like, I want Jesus and I want my stuff. I want Jesus and I, I want, but I want to be me. 
I don't want to be like you. I want to be like me. I want to do me. It's about me, girl. You don't know. I know I'm talking to you right now, and I love you so much, but what I want you to understand is when your identity is in you, it's, you're always going to lose. When your identity is in you and how you feel and what they did and how you, you're always going to lose. But when your identity is in Christ, when you're standing in faith on the word of God, you can press in the right direction. Can you imagine me pressing in the right direction? Like I, I got my GPS, I get in the car, I'm going somewhere. You know, I got my water here, I got put my purse, I sit down, I got my phone, I charge up, I get ready, I fix the mirror, I fix my seat because I, I, I'm getting ready to go, right? I put on the brake, turn on the car, get ready. I put the car in reverse and hit the gas and go in the wrong direction. That's what many of us do. We are going in the wrong direction. It is not God's direction. It's how you feel. It's how you're trying to validate the person that told you what you're not. It's how you're trying to validate your ex and what they said. And I'll prove to you and I'll show you. And God ain't sent you in that direction. And you're trying to figure out why you ain't getting nowhere. It ain't the alternator. You in the wrong direction. Yeah, you got gas. You just put the car in reverse. I'm supposed to be forgetting that stuff. I'm supposed to be reaching for God, for his call, for his purpose, to tell people about Jesus. I'm supposed to be pressing despite how I feel. For him, not for me. I press toward the mark. I love this translation, uh, the Passion Translation, when it says, uh, 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 I forget all the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory and the prize. That's the victory. When we understand that the mark is still there and we can't lower the mark, we can't shift the mark, we can't change the mark. The standard is what it is. God said what he said. He ain't changing his mind based on what you've been through. He has established it and it is our responsibility as believers to follow what God has told us to do. But what I told y'all, he never makes us do this by ourselves. You trying to resist the enemy? Submit to God. Resist the enemy, he'll flee. See, we try to get the, the, the prize without the press. We try to get the result without reaching the mark. We trying to do it our own way. Well, see, if I meet this one, I'm about to do. No, no, if I live right, if I'm obedient, if I'm humble, if I'm a servant, if I'm giving, if I understand the power of my praise, if I understand sacrificing to praise when I want to argue, if I understand sacrificing my praise and when I want to cuss somebody out, yes, the saints cuss. We praying on that too. I know y'all got cute t-shirts. I'm saved, but I cuss a little. Yeah, but the word speaks against, against that. What does the word say about me and my choices and what I'm doing? That is meeting the mark, trying to get the instructions. Y'all know most folks don't read instructions. We get a box. We look at the pieces. I'm guilty. I just did it the last week. I look at the pieces. I think I know what this is. And you try to put it together. There's always something missing when you do it without the instructions. He, laid, he gave us instructions to reach this mark. You don't got to press on your own. You don't got to figure it out. It's clear. Relationships, it's clear. Business, it's clear. Broken hearts, it's clear what the word has told us how to handle it. But still, we want to do it our own way. I understand. We're human, right? We can make our choices, and God gave us that privilege. But he wants us to choose him. He has, he's given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. Life and godliness. Regular stuff and spiritual stuff. He's given you everything to figure out how to deal with this. Uh-uh, I just got to put the Bible down. Uh-uh, this ain't about the Bible. It's always about the word of God. Because the moment I get out the word, then I'm doing it in my own spirit and my own flesh. And I'm always going to jack it up. So I've got to make sure that I hide the word in my heart that I might not sin against God. So I, so I press. So I push. And so I don't, I, I don't press in the wrong direction. I don't get in the car and go the wrong way because I'm trying to figure it out. I know you've heard many times that the, the rear view mirror is small and you're supposed to just glance at it. You ain't never supposed to stare in the rear view mirror. You've got the windshield that you're looking because you're going forward. I press forward. I'm reaching forward. I'm trying to overcome. Maybe there's a hill in front of you. I've got to press forward. Maybe there's a valley in front of you. I've got to press forward toward the mark for the prize. I'm pressing for the mark for the prize. Yes, I want my prize. It ain't nothing wrong with saying I want my prize. But I know it comes with living right. 
then I can feel good about every blessing God has poured on me because I didn't bless myself. I don't got this big load of money, but I can't tell everybody I kind of stole somebody else's money and did a raggedy contract and took advantage of somebody. I don't have to do all of that. I don't have to hide it when I know that I did things God's way and I get God's results. Here's another thing that we do in our, in our pressing. And I love, you know, back to the beginning of this, I, I count not myself to have apprehended. So when we think our leaders, are, when, it, when we think they got it together, we think they're the mark. So we're trying to press to be more like them. And yes, we are examples. That's true. We are examples. But sometimes you allow people to get in your way of seeing God. I can't see God because I'm so busy looking at you. What you do, what you say, what you post, who's your friends, what you drink, what you laugh at, what's funny, who you follow. I want to be what, wait, what my pastor do, what you wear, what my first lady, I'm what, I'm not your mark. I love being a first lady. I love being an example. I'm an example in my business life, my personal life at home. Yes, I am. But I'm not your mark. I'm always wanting you to see God in me, the Holy Spirit rising up in me. I want you to see me get in a difficult, difficult situation and still give God praise. I want you to see me go through a hard time and say, though you slay me, yet will I trust him. I want you to see me. That is the mark. That's what we're trying to do, not making our own way, not figuring out how we feel and then trying to justify, well, God, understand I'm past a certain age. I mean, I just got to do what I got to do. I got to do what God says do at all times, in all times. Pastor, will you come here? I'm, 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 I want to use you for an example. This is how we do. This, we pressing the beat to be close. I need to be close to my pastor. I'm pressing. I'm pressing. Now, God is up there. Jesus is up there. But I'm on him. He didn't call me. He didn't spend time. Nobody. I'm going through. I'm, I'm pressing him. He didn't call. Nobody. Nobody's there for me. I'm, I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to get close to the pastor. He won't call me back. And this is what we need to do. And stand in the face of Jesus. Press past your own insecurity. Press past your own pain. Press past your own misconceptions. Listen, some of you, thank you, Pastor. Thank, some of you come from different churches. Some of you, this is your very first time. So this church stuff is all new to you. And it literally don't make sense. You know, you were, you were raised when somebody say something to you, you hit them in the mouth. And the Bible say when somebody say something to you, turn the other cheek. Turn it what? Turn the other cheek so I can hit them on it. What? what? You're trying to figure out this humility thing. The instructions are here. You know, even in church, sometimes you you mad at somebody over something silly. You came to church to praise God, but I got to go around you because uh-uh, I can't praise God because uh-uh, I just I just can't. I just can't. Where they do that at? Not in heaven. Ain't that we're, we're trying to get to heaven? We're trying to be like Jesus, right? And so you tuh, don't play because I'm tuh, don't play with me. You proud of that nasty attitude? You proud of no submission? You're proud of no discipline? You're proud? Of saying I hold grudges. Do you know what anger does inside your heart? Anger is like, it's like, it's toxic. It's poison. One of my very best friends battling cancer. When he went to the doctor, you know what the doctor, stage four, been stage four for I don't know how many years, still on this planet, living and breathing. Because God is a keeper. But you know what the doctor asked him? Who are you mad at? Who are you angry with? I don't know about you, but when I'm, when I'm at odds with somebody that I love, I get, it's, a, it's a pain in the pit of my stomach. I, I can't eat. I feel uncomfortable. And that's how I feel when I know I've displeased God. I don't try to justify it or rectify it or make it okay or explain to all of heaven why I should be okay with being mad at this person for the rest of my life. Because if the word says when I get to heaven, I don't want a spot or a blemish or a wrinkle, that means I've got to get that junk out of my heart. We've got to deal with ourselves. And whether you go into prayer or th therapy, whatever it is, you've got to deal with yourself. You've got to figure out where you are and how you are so you can press. Some of y'all ain't pressed nothing. You ain't pressed a button. You ain't pressed a light. You ain't pressed nothing. You just, you just here. I'm just here. And I understand this is a pandemic and I understand some of us lost our job and we, we've lost. I understand, but we've still got to press. We've still got to push. We've still got to reach. We've still got to overcome. We've still got to fight for the victory. Yes, fight for the victory because the enemy is trying to be on your head 24-7. But I promise you when you press, I promise you when you push, 
I promise you when you declare for God I live and for God I die. I promise you when you say the victory is mine, even though you ain't seen it yet. I promise you when you speak I'm healed, even though you still cough. And I promise you that when you press and you stand on the word of God, you will receive the prize. And what I love about Jesus is that all prizes are not just in heaven. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Some stuff I'm going to get down here because I'm reaching for the mark. Baby, I ain't reaching for you. I'm reaching for the mark. I'm not comparing myself to you. I know who God has called to called me to be. I'm going to press for the mark because I want my prize. And I'm going to get to the mark. No matter how tough it is, I will press. Stressed out, I will press. Losing friends, I will press. Overwhelmed, confused, I will press. Fighting depression, fighting the darkness, I will press. Press toward the mark. Press toward deliverance. Press toward your victory. Come on, people. We've got to press. Hallelujah. 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 And for those of you who say sometimes it's hard, Galatians 6 and 9 has let us not be weary. In well-doing, don't get tired of doing the right thing. For in due season. For in due season. For at the right time. For on the right day. For just the moment you need it. You will reap if you faint not. We've got to press. We've got to press, church. Whether you are in our faces or you just at home and on your computer, are you pressing? Sometimes it is a press. Sometimes it is a challenge to wake up in the morning and say, God, I love you. God, I praise you. Sometimes you wake up with why first. And he understands your why. He understands that. I love that Paul was honest. Hey, man, I mess up sometimes. Thank God for grace. Thank God for his grace and his mercy. Word says he gives us brand new mercy every single day. When you wake up in tom tomorrow, mercy will be waiting on you. He knows where we are. And he gave us everything that we need to live the life that he has designed for us. I want his stuff. I want what God has for me. Yes, it's easy to get distracted by the world and stuff and people and what we thought. You know, you thought you was going to get this big blessing at 21. You 42, like, Jesus, you forgot me? I don't know why. I won't, even, I won't tell you you're not ready. I won't, I won't go through all those things that people tell you. I'll just say, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Wait on the Lord. Keep pressing for the mark. Wait on God's time. Those dreams that he gave you, that vision that he gave you, these big things that were bigger than you, it shall come to pass if you press. But if you stop, you'll never get there. You've got to press. You've got to push. Maybe your family don't look the way you want it to look, and you think it's all chaos. Yes, God can save your family. Meet the mark and press. Press, pray, push. Press, pray, push. Don't be discouraged. Don't throw in the towel. Don't walk away. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on you. Don't give up on your calling. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on what, is, what God has placed on the inside of you. There is purpose for you being on this planet. There is a purpose for your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you feel encouraged in your heart. So we now know that we are running straight for this divine invitation. We are letting go of some things and we're reaching for some things. Some of you need to make a new request. Some of what you've been praying for, it didn't line up with what the Father wants. It's okay to start over. It's okay. You got a clean slate. Take your white sheet and let the blood make it blank. Let the Holy Spirit remove all the things that the enemy tries to remind you. We are forgetting those things. We're forgetting those things. Whether they are victories or defeats, we are forgetting those things which are behind us. And we're reaching. We're reaching. Sometimes we're broken, but we're reaching. Because God, I desire to be more like you. Every day, I desire to be more like you. And it ain't a waste of time waiting on my time. Because in due season, we shall reap. In due season, 
in due season. So patiently praise him. So patiently wait on him. Make your faith confession every single day. I believe I will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. I believe that he loves me. I believe I'm called and chosen. I believe I'm the righteousness of God. I believe I'm fearfully and wonderfully made in his image. No matter my size, no matter my eyes, no matter my friends, my bank account, I am fearfully, wonderfully made in his image. And he loves me. He loves me. More than they did, he loves me. He loves me. More than I love myself, he loves me. So I will press for the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Give God a hand of praise. God bless you. Hallelujah. Can we give God another praise for the word? Somebody repeat after me. Say, I will press. Come on, I will press. Come on, say it again. I will. I will press. I will press. I will press. Press past people and press into the promise of God on your life. Listen, we don't want to assume everybody that just heard that word uh, knows the Lord. Could you just uh, indulge me for a second and just repeat after me? Slip up your right hand just wherever you are. And say, Father, please forgive me. Father, I know I've been wrong. I know I've made some mistakes. But you said if I confess with my mouth, confess my sins to you, you will forgive me. Father, I confess with my mouth and I believe with my heart that you died for my sins. You died for my value. You even died for my equity. Jesus, Master, come into my heart, rest, rule, and abide, and I will serve you with my whole life, with my whole life, with my whole life, for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, come on, say in Jesus' name, amen, amen. If you prayed that prayer... Heaven's rejoicing because you are now saved. Get into your word and get into a, a Bible-believing church. Uh, you can always join the California Worship Center online. You can, you can email info at caliworship.com and join us. We love you. It's time to do our ending declaration. Praise God one more time for that awesome word from our first lady. I will press. 